The Shawanaga River is one of many rivers that flow down from the highlands of central Ontario into Georgian Bay. I first heard about this river from a friend that paddled it solo 40 years ago. He shared his experience of the hardships and challenges he endured from the headwaters to the bay as he navigated around numerous falls and rapids through dense bush along the way. I was hooked. So in the summer of 2017, a new friend joined me on this canoe trip of intrigue and adventure as we made our way 40 kilometers down from the headwaters at Shawanaga Lake to Georgian Bay with little info in the topple map. Good morning, everyone. Um, just uh, heading over to meet uh, my partner, Heather. We're just about to embark on a trip. I want to tell you a little bit about um, before we, we meet up. So this is a trip that I wanted to do a few years ago, and this is a river that flows into Georgian Bay, and it's called the Shawanaga River. And I heard about it first from James Carter. So thank you, James, or Jimmy, uh, as he's known. He uh, basically, in his youth, he used to um, work at a camp. I believe it's a YMC camp on Franklin Island, I believe. And uh, back in the days, he used to lead trips in around that area. And uh, at one point, he wanted to explore and uh, venture down the Shawanaga River, and which he did. I believe he did it solo. Of course, when I heard uh, a little bit about this, I inquired more. And uh, of course, when he told me that when he remember, as he remembers, it was tough and was challenging. I mean, that really perked my ears, and uh, it got me thinking about doing the trip as well. It's not a known route. It's uh, it's a route that he did on his own. It was a personal trip. So we got four days to head down the river. It's probably more than enough time to uh, finish the trip. But we're gonna if we if we finish early, what we're gonna do is gonna paddle in amongst or around Shawanaga Island and then we're going to make our way down to Snug Harbor. So I'm looking forward to the challenge and it uh, should be a fun trip. After meeting Heather, we both drove north in separate vehicles. Since this was a linear route, we needed a vehicle at the end point of our trip, so we drove to the small village of Snug Harbor and paid to leave Heather's vehicle at the marina. Then we continued another 60 kilometers northeast to Shawanaga Lake to begin our trip. Okay, we just arrived at Shawanaga Lake. Um, we're just at the access point, and uh, it looks like other people have parked here along the side of this road with their trailers uh, for their boats. So it's it's a good sign. It means that we could probably park here without uh, without um, having problems over the next four days. Here's the the access point. Here's the here's the lake, and you can see there's a bunch of cottages on the lake. Good, uh, this is a, a good thing because I was worried about where we could park and where, uh, we, where we could leave the vehicle and not have to worry about for the next four days, but it doesn't seem like there's going to be a problem here. So the day looks like it's turning out uh, better. It was really overcast and uh, cloudy there for a bit, but now it's breaking up and the sun's coming out. It won't be very warm today. I think it's only going to get to maybe about 20, but uh, we're going to get unloaded and get started. Excited to start the trip? So we're just out on Shawanaga Lake. Yeah, it's a big lake. Um, we actually noticed, just saw some canoeists uh, paddling on the opposite shore, but there are cottage uh, inches dispersed along the shorelines. And uh, it just looks like your typical, you know, lake in the Muskoka. So we're just heading over now to the, uh, what do you call it, the western end of the lake. And uh, we're probably about Little, almost about halfway there and we'll be entering the river proper in, in probably about another half hour 45 minutes so so far so good we were talking to a local at the, the put-in and he did mention that the river the lake is up about a foot 
so that's good news. And uh, he says he did mention that there was like waterfalls and rapids and things like that. So uh, it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see them, and maybe we can run some of them. Right, Heather? <laughs> She's yeah. giving me this look. Of, what? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Here you can clearly see evidence of the high water levels as some of the lily pads and water shields are below the surface. Yeah. Yep. So we're just coming to the, the narrowing of the river and we thought this part um, there was going to be nobody here but obviously there's a bunch of cottages here. So you can see a road and the bridge there and we're going to continue past there. And then the river constricts considerably, so it'll be interesting to see what we find beyond this bridge. As we got closer, we realized it was actually a train bridge, the CP rail line. We pulled over to check it out and see if we could get a glimpse of the river on the other side. As Heather stayed in the canoe below, I climbed up and took a look. I couldn't see that far, but could definitely hear rapids ahead confirmed by a cottage owner by the tracks. So we've just come to a rapid. It, it is a re, uh, runnable rapid, but uh, because Heather doesn't have experience with running rapids, it is a little dicey. So we're just, ow, ow, ow. There's thorns here, just watch. Um, we're just basically bushwhacking around the, uh, the rapid here. It's pretty thick. You can hear the rapid beside us. But, Getting through. There, we go, that's better. Which is at the river's edge right now, right here. And there's actually a road and a bridge over there. So. Let's put the stuff down here. Give you a view of the rapid here. See here? Totally runnable uh, with the right people, of course, but uh, we're just going to be portaging around it, obviously. Not bad. Probably a class 2 tech. So, obviously, the people here have canoed as well. You can see there are two canoes. But here's the drop. Then it was back on the river where we got to paddle through a large culvert underneath the road, which was pretty cool. So we just ran down a little uh, swift um, and came around the corner and we knew that there was something bigger because we can hear it so we pulled off but you can see it drops off here and there's a nice series of uh, you know rapids or ledges uh, that goes down but I think it continues down so we're not obviously going to run it. We'll get up and uh, portage along the side of the, the river. The rapid was a long S bend as it made its way down a series of ledges. It was a good call to carry but there was no portage trail. So we're just uh, in, a, in a small little valley and it's multiple rapids one after another. There's ledges and drops and it just curls around so we pretty much had to bushwhack all the way over to the other side but it's pretty. I'm just on a big log right now probably back from the logging area because all these trees are pretty small but it's really pretty in here so we're just going back for the second load for the canoe 
thankfully the forest is kind of open so that we can get the canoe through without having to cut too much. We had just started on the Shawanaka River and I was already amazed at how beautiful it was. But that was just the beginning. We had just left one long cascading rapid when we thought we were coming upon another, as you can hear from our conversation. I hear some more water. <laughs> I don't know if it's the wind. Yeah. Oh, something's coming off the other yeah. side. Is that a big falls? Holy. To check it out. Wow. Okay, we gotta stop here for a bit. Wow. Holy. But we certainly weren't expecting this. Uh, which shore is better? Maybe on the left? Yeah. Wow, this is gorgeous. There we go. We just had to pull over and check these gorgeous falls out. So what an amazing treat. As we started to paddle, we started to hear some more rapids and we thought we had to pull out again. But in fact, it was that massive falls that was coming off the side into the river and uh, it is stunning. I'm just trying to find a way to get over to the top. Uh, we just found out that um, the falls comes down and there you can see the road here. You can see Heather's over on that side exploring. We got out because we thought uh, what the heck was above this uh, waterfall that all this water was rushing in so we wanted to see if there was like a pond or lake. I have a map but it's in black and white so it's hard to see uh, if there was a lake or a pond above it. So we wanted to get out and explore and see what was, other, what was there. Okay, so we're now on the road as you can see here. And there's Heather at the top. There you go. How would you run this? Uh, it would be called the suicide run. Oh, okay. The first and last run. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can see it's a road here. And on this side, you can see it's, uh, it's probably coming from a wetland over, over there. So, not a lake, just probably a big pond or a marsh back there. But wow, the drop is, is stunning and the waterfall is beautiful. So I'll just go over there and join Heather at the top of the falls. I'm sure the locals all know about it because look, there's a parking spot right here. I'm sure they park here and check this place out. Well, there's a vehicle. What do you think so far? Awesome. What? <laughs> 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 
It was such a beautiful place, but it was time to get back to the river. But wouldn't you know it, after paddling a short distance, we heard another familiar roar and had to pull over again. I got out and quickly scouted what I suspected. Yep, another set of falls. So there's huge falls here. It's absolutely uh, stunning. I didn't expect it. I knew there was going to be drops and not like this big. So we're just going to obviously get our stuff and uh, make our way down. And maybe we'll come back up and take some shots. But here's the first drop. Incredible. Wow, we're in this big valley here. Look at this, huge. So after getting our gear through, it was time to check out the falls. This fall fell in three stages, with the middle one being the most impressive. Wow, these falls are incredible. I mean, I know the water levels are up here and it just makes the waterfalls even more spectacular, but I just didn't expect this kind of drop. And man, it just, it totally blew me away. This is bigger than anything that we saw in the Shibishi Con. And uh, wow, it's totally worth coming here, that's for sure. There you go. We finally got to paddle down the river for a length of time in silence, away from the roar of angry water and watching the force pass by on either side. But if we thought this was the last of the falling water, we were sorely wrong. Looks like a trail right here. As you can see here, it's quite uh, defined. Um, Sure, people have passed through here years ago. Yeah, goes down and goes around. It's a narrow, uh, kind of like almost like a slot canyon where the water drops down. And uh, yeah, it's hard to scout. It's possible it could be runnable, but you can definitely see the trail here. This is kind of neat. There you go. Oh, look at how there's such a well-defined trail here. Continues this way. Probably tries to avoid all that. I mean, we could easily put in over there and run the shallow part, but I'll follow this trail. Wow, what a nice trail, eh? Yes. Treat, the, <laughs> the truth comes Stop. out. Speak your mind. <laughs> Here's a quick view of the section we were bypassing. It's 
So this is that uh, little chute that they wanted to avoid on this portage. It is runnable. Um, you would take some water in, but then the rest is, uh, you could easily bail out and if you dumped it wouldn't be a big deal. But yeah, if uh, there was um, someone that wanted to try it, you could definitely do it without uh, any repercussions. But uh, again, just another beautiful spot. This forest is uh, mature. I mean, it's not like old growth, but there's a lot of huge uh, trees all around here and we're stuck in a valley and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's not like the other area. It certainly has a different feel to it as well too. It just feels older and just uh, like more mature. And this trail is, is a treat. Didn't expect to find a nice uh, portage trail around here. Heather was nice enough to offer carrying the canoe this time. We continued paddling on and even ran some easy swifts after convincing Heather she could trust me with this. But wouldn't you know it, we came upon another tumbling rapid which necessitated a short carry. This was the run we were carrying around. It was so pretty. I was quickly falling in love with this river. As the lay of the land began to flatten, the flow of the river slowed. Then we began to see the transition in vegetation to a wetland habitat as the river also widened. This only meant one thing. We were coming upon Little Shawanaga Lake, our destination for the night. Okay, so we're on an island on uh, Little Shawanaga Lake and uh, we decided to stop here first because it's a little late, it's, uh, it's almost six and secondly because it's an actually a beautiful area and, and a great campsite. Hundreds have used it so it's a little messy but otherwise there's uh, firewood, there's flat spots and there's actually a crapper too. Two. Not just one, two. And I've been told which one I'm allowed to use and which one I'm not allowed to use. <laughs> um, but what I wanted to show you is that Eureka sent me a new tent. It's called the Sweet Dream Sweet, Sweet Dream 2. It's a it's a new tent they had they have this is made this year. Brought out this year and I mean look at the bag it's fancy. It's got two zippers on either side and uh, and we've got now a hub system with uh, with the poles and apparently it's supposed to be spacious and uh, really nice. So and it's not a light tripping tent it's it's about seven pounds so it's kind of heavy but it's got 40 square feet so it's it's pretty spacious it's got a big vestibule. So we're gonna set it up and uh, I've never done this before so it might take a while. <laughs> We might be sleeping under the stars <laughs> if I don't get this done soon, but uh, let's see how it goes. We did it, and here's what the tent and our camp looks like for the night. So it is about 7.30 right now and we are in the bug shelter and we are on a nice little island site on Little Shawanaga Lake. Yep. And uh, we're in a bug shelter only because there are actually a good number of mosquitoes. They're the small ones and uh, they, they are pretty much latching on like crazy. So we're uh, in this nice shelter and uh, Heather really likes it. I think <laughs> she's going to get one. <laughs> um, so we're gonna ha we're just having supper. I cooked up. Uh, it's my supper night, and we're doing. Um, it's a Korean curry, and there in the Korean curry, it's it's mixed with rice, and in there there's uh, carrots, onion, potato, and I think that's it. And oh yeah, and shredded chicken, 
and uh, and then it's mixed with rice. So it is uh, it's one of my favorite meals. Um, and uh, hopefully, Lynn. Uh, <laughs> see, I called you Lynn. See, I got it in my head now. No. I, hopefully Heather will like it. She says it smells good, so she can't wait to try it. So we're gonna just chow down and uh, yeah, time to eat. <laughs> it's good. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Take that camera off. So what's your no? What? <laughs> what's your consensus on the meal? Well, I just burped. It was good. <laughs> you want me to try again? <laughs> Go for it. No, I got nothing on me right now. Just give me a second. Give me a second. Yep. Yeah. You have... No, the pressure's on. I can't do it. <laughs> you have four days. <laughs> okay, not a problem. I'll right. Give me about 15 seconds. Okay. Okay, I'm nice. going to eat. Suspect. It's funny, because they have more than enough sheep. Don't sheep make milk? Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Everything. Anything yeah, but... that a mammal makes milk. Can you not make chocolate out of sheep milk? Oh, maybe not. Okay, maybe that explains. They don't have cows there. So we're having so. Icelandic <laughs> uh, chocolate, <clears throat> because Heather was just on a trip there. Was it for a week? Yep. Yeah, and she did a half marathon. Woohoo! She yeah. completed. Kicked ass. <laughs> and well, uh, as, as a treat, she <laughs> brought me um, yummy, delicious... Sorry, I brought you chocolate? <laughs> I brought chocolate for me. <laughs> I just thought it would share some... Yummy, Icelandic <laughs> chocolate. Chocolate that cost about $19. Oh, yeah. ouch. And it's not even real. Okay. So it's licorice, salted licorice, you said? Salted licorice. Mm, let's see. Can we focus oh. in here? Come on, focus on the chocolate. Let's see, <laughs> let's see if I can get it to focus. Focus. Maybe it's too close. There we go. Well, it's not even tastes like chocolate. No? No. Well, how do you make a real chocolate bar? There we go. I think it was too close. What are the here? ingredients? Cocoa yeah. solids. Okay. Okay, let's try it. First ingredient. Sugar, cocoa butter, whole milk powder, skim milk. There's not even any cocoa solids in this. I guess they can't import it. Mm. Island. I have a bad flavor, but you're right. It it's doesn't really taste, taste like chocolate. chocolate. Yeah, but you know what? Other stuff there doesn't taste normal either. Like their ice cream doesn't taste like ice cream. No. It's weird. So I don't know if it's an issue that they can't get the. the base products there, like the ingredients there? I think she got the good chocolate at home uh -uh. and she brought me this. <laughs> Why are you giggling? No. Why are you giggling? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you have something to admit? No. <laughs> She's probably going to give me gas. <laughs> <laughs> you already have gas. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>
<laughs> I wish it was a good morning. I've got some bad news. I'm, I think I'm more stunned right now. I'm kind of shocked. I have to say, this river is absolutely just stunning. I can't believe the things that we've already experienced and the things that we're still experiencing. I thought we've dropped enough that uh, there wouldn't be much more.